So, um, I'm going to give an introduction to Luminar 4. Everybody's gone quiet. It's very strange. <clears throat> uh, I love Photoshop. I consider myself to be very good at Photoshop. Um, so I know how to do everything in Photoshop. I first installed Luminar 4 when it came out last year. Um, and I struggled with it because every time I tried to do something with it, it crashed on me. It crashed my computer. So I tried it as a standalone and I also tried it as um, a plugin for Photoshop. And no matter what I did, it crashed. So I sort of parked it for a while. And because I was going to give this talk, I decided to give it another go. So I, I started it back up. I installed all the latest Photoshop updates, the latest Windows updates, the latest Luminar updates um, I had just uh, 10 days ago. And I started playing with it more seriously. So hopefully what you can see in front of you is the Luminar screen. So I haven't I, opened any pictures because not everybody has Luminar. And it's not immediately intuitive how to open an image. So, so normally you would go to file and open an image, but there's no open image option there. But what you can do is add a folder with images in, and that puts it into your library. Or you can select edit a single image. Yeah. It's not like Photoshop where you just open an image or if you can have libraries and everything in Bridge and Lightroom and you can transfer them to Photoshop. But Luminar does it a slightly different way. So for me, I'm just going to go through uh, editing single images. I'm not going to open libraries and everything else. But there's two ways of opening Luminar itself. You can either open it standalone or you can open it through Photoshop as a plugin. So you've got Skylum software there. So if, if for example, I opened an image, um, it doesn't matter which image. But this is one bug I've already got and I've, I've been trying for 10 days to get support on this, but I can't get support. If I go to fill it, uh, it, filter Skylum software and Luminar 4, it, it starts, it tries to open Luminar 4 but it fails, it just stops there. Which is a bit of a problem for me. It's a bit of a pain because there are some things that I want to do in Photoshop and then transfer the image to Luminar, but it doesn't allow me to do that. So I'd have to do my what, what I wanted in Photoshop first, save the image and then open it later in Luminar. Does it allow you to do it through um, Bridge? No. No, you've only got the... <coughs> You've only got the plugins for Photoshop and for Lightroom. I manage it this afternoon to, yeah. through, through Photoshop. It works fine. Yeah, for, for some reason, it, it did work fine. When I first installed it in November, uh, it would run as the plugin through Photoshop. But since I've updated Luminar, the, the Photoshop plugin no longer works, even though I've uninstalled and reinstalled it. So... It, it doesn't make any difference. So what I'm going to do is just edit a single image in Luminar. Now, Luminar does have, to do things in Photoshop, you need to know what every single tool does, and it's not intuitive at all. What I like about Luminar is it's laying out the tools in such a way, it makes it easier to understand what needs to be done. Yeah. So I'm just going to start off with this sparrow image. Now, I do find the updating of the image in Luminar takes a few seconds. Uh, it, it isn't as, fa as fast as Photoshop. So this is a, an image I took a, just a couple of days ago. Yeah. So I can zoom into it. What's important for me for image editing is I always start off with a reasonably good quality image anyway, and you can see the sharpness on the eye of the sparrow is quite good. 
Yeah, so that's 100% zoom there. Now, normally in Photoshop, I would do my editing of the whole image and then crop later. But I find in Luminar, um, I'm preferring to, to do my crop first. So, one second. I didn't explain the tools first. So, I've open, edited, opened a single image for editing. You've got a series of options on the top for albums, image settings, for views. You can zoom in, zoom out, um, change the windows. You've got an option here where you can see the before and after effects. Right now, we haven't made any adjustments. Or there's an eye, so you can click the eye to take away any adjustments you've done. Uh, I think I'll just make a quick adjustment. Click on edit here. Go to air enhance. J just do something, j something quick. So you can see the difference. So if I press the eye symbol, it takes away the changes. Or you can split it and see the before and after effects. Russell, how fast is the screen update? Is it updating okay? It's really quite good for me. Good? Yeah, very good. Okay. Instant. So, so, so you can see me moving the slider fine, yes? Yeah, it's very good. Excellent. So there's no lag there at all, which is great. I'll just turn that back down so we haven't made any adjustments yet. Or no, undo it. So, what I would start off with is in, in Luminar for me is cropping the image to, to what I want to see. Now, the crop tool is in the middle at the top. Now, to start with, the aspect ratio is of the original image size. So, if you move any of the corners in, it keeps the same aspect of the original image. For me, I prefer to use free imaging, but you've, you've got the full list of options there where you can select different ratios and different print sizes. So if you're gonna do a certain print size as your output, then select one of those and find the correct crop for that. But for me, for when I'm doing digital work only, I know I'm only gonna put this on Facebook, for example, I would just manually position the crop to what I feel is pleasing. Now I'm gonna get the bird's eye on the, on the left third and just bring this down. Take it up so I can see some of the splashes and bring it in a bit, I guess. And then press done at the end of it. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with that crop for, for what I want. Now, on the edit window, I, I've, I've only got the, the standard essentials selected right now. So the, the first tab is for, for light. So I can increase, so you can see the bird's eye is a little bit dark there around the, the eye area. So I'm gonna increase the shadows not too much, you, you can take it too far and it starts to look unreal. So I'm gonna take it to a level where I think it's acceptable. Reduce the highlights. You can see there's a lot of bright areas, the splashes, the water drops. Uh, has a lot of brightness, so I'm just gonna reduce that. If you click on the headline of that box, it minimizes it again. So you can expand them and contract them, minimize them just by clicking on them. The AI enhance is excellent. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of AI enhance and that's a, a Luminar algorithm. Uh, and I've tested this on quite a few images and it, it, for me it works really well. In this case, we have no sky, so I'm not gonna to bother touching the sky enhancer. But what you can do as well is edit the mask. Now, 
You can have gradient masks, radial masks, uh, luminosity masks, or just use a brush. So for the mask, you can add. So you see there's a new menu across the top here. So you've got the size. You can select the size on the slider or exactly the same as Photoshop. If you use the square brackets, you can increase or decrease the size with the square, square brackets. So if I'm painting, So you can add or remove to the mask as you as you want, and you can see maybe I'm not using enough of a, an enhance on this, so you can't really see the effect. Yeah. So you can erase it or add to the effect that, uh, as you like. There you go. Just back this off. This is just an example. So, so that's the AI enhance. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see the structure as well. So, there's an AI structure. You can add far more structure and even give it a boost. But I like to, in, in the, my experiment, I've, I've learned to keep this down to a low level, around uh, five or 10. Oh, I've got a, a whistling feedback somewhere. But I prefer to use, better than the structure for me, I'll, I'll turn the structure off completely. I prefer to use the details enhancer. So you can enhance small details. So that will enhance any noise in the image and any further detail on birds and things. So it's a small local sharpening and also medium details. You can see the lines on the feathers and the edges of the wings becoming more detailed. What I found with the large details is if you're working on things like buildings and skies, the large details tend to give a lot of halos. So I, I don't really like using the large details. I, I much prefer the smaller, um, the small details and the medium details. Okay, let's zoom out a little on that. And again, after each change, I'll take a look just to see the difference between what I've done and the original. Okay, turn that off. So that, that's, that's, that's the details enhancer part. Now, if you go to info, you can see I've taken this at ISO 800 in the corner there, yeah? And that's introduced quite a bit of noise in the image. So if I go back to edit and you, there's a denoise tool. So you've got a color denoise. The higher the ISO that you use, the more luminosity, which is the, the speckly pixels and the color noise, the higher the ISO, the more color noise you'll get as well. Um, and I find the denoise function in Luminar works really well. I can't see much color noise at, at all there, but I'm keeping the luminosity to a quite a low level. Oops. 
zoom in again. I got a little bit of lag here for making the changes. So you can see the, 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 the before and after effects there already. Okay. Landscape enhancer. Uh, I'm not going to go through that yet because this is not a landscape. So I'm not going to bother with that. Um, let's zoom right out. So fit to screen and then you can add a vignette. You can either make a white vignette by going positive or a dark vignette by going negative. And that helps you draw your eye into the, into the subject. You can also increase or decrease the size of the vignette. Oops. I'm trying to zoom in there, it's not working, so I'll have to use manual zoom. So that, that was a, a couple of quick edits on the essentials. And if you understand the terminology, the use of all these tools is very intuitive. If you don't want to go through that, you've also got all these options on the bottom for, for different types of editing that they suggest. So you've got super sharp and soft and airy and you can do a classic black and white or just the AI image enhancer. Yeah. And you can just click on those just to see the effects that each would produce. Okay. Any, any questions so far? Is there a, is there a like in Photoshop, a step back button, like if you do something wrong and you can step back. Yes, for, for, for each of these, uh, for each of these modules, you've got the undo arrow there. So that will revert it to the standard settings. Or for AI enhance, you've also got the on off switch. You can disable the complete module. Yeah. So you can either step back to reset the values or you can switch the module on and off. For some reason, it doesn't have the switch in the in the light. Um, but also in the light section, if you think the image is too yellow, for example, you can change the color temperature of the image. Yeah. But I know that this was taken uh, at five o'clock in the evening, where the sun was low and the light was quite warm. So I prefer, for me, I'd like to keep it to a more of a natural light. You can also change the tint, the exposure, you can do the, the standard brightening and everything. Uh, some contrasts, but yeah, it, it's got all the standard tools there. I do like the, um, the color options in the advanced as well. Yeah, I, I'm going to come on to all, all of these stuff. Okay. Um, how are we for time now? So it's 9.36. If I was happy with that image, then I'd go to file and export. And you can save as a JPEG, TIFF, I would probably use 16-bit TIFF. Wouldn't use any additional changes to the sharpening because I've already done that. Um, you can choose your color space. For display on the internet, I'd only use sRGB. And because I'm in TIFF, I would select 16-bit. It doesn't matter so much of the resolution if you display in on uh, on the computer screen. So I'm, I'm not going to do that. So right now we're on the Essentials tab. You've also got some creative options, portrait options, and professional options. The creative options are sky replacement, augmented sky. Uh, we, don't, we don't have any use for these in this image, but I'll come on to these so we can take a look. Um, matte look, maybe the matte look is 
possibly useful in this. No, for, for, for me it isn't given anything useful. Um, you can do texture overlays, you can include your own textures, uh, glow, film, grain and fog. Now, most of these I'm going to come on to, to later images. So for this, just for a simple natural image, I'd like to keep it as natural as possible. I know when I zoom in, all the details are there. Uh, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. The only thing that I would say about this is the bird's head is still a little bit dark and around it is much lighter. So I'd like to change that. So if I go to Pro, there's a dodge and burn. So you've got contrast, uh, gradients, dodge and burn, color enhancers, photo filters, and split toning. Now for this, I would probably go to dodge and burn and click on this dark and around it is much lighter. So I <laughs> so if I go to dodge, dodge and burn, you've got the the tool options across the top here where the, my cursor is. So I'm going to use a small low value strength, just about 5%. So I can do the lightening and darkening in sm small steps. Now you, with, with what I find with Luminar is there's quite a delay from when you click the button to the effect actually taking place. So I'm just going to lighten the face a little using a small brush. And using the square bracket keys on the keyboard, I can make the brush larger and go to darken. And I'm just start darkening around the bird where it's a little bit too light for me. And it normally takes Luminar a few seconds to update. If I press done, I should be able to see the effect then just before. I... Now it's all very subtle, but it makes the the image sing out a little bit more. Yeah. So you can see. So you can see before the bird's face is dark and around it is quite bright. And then afterwards, the attention is, brings you into the, the bird itself. So for that sort of nature image, that's pretty much as much as I, I would do with it. And then you can export it and move on to your next image. I'm just going to remove that from my edits. Oh, actually, no, maybe I'll export it and save it. Barrel one tiff. Um, I should have a folder there for the luminar. There we go. So it's exported. Do you find it takes a bit of time to save a file, Darren? Yes, I find it very slow in saving files. Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, well, it's, it's not only just slow in saving files, but I'm, I'm used to, um, with any of the tools I use in Photoshop, so I find them immediate. And there's always a couple of seconds of lag in Luminar before you see the ref it. It seems to have to calculate it all in this uh, intuitive artificial intelligence it has. So I'm going to remove this from single edits. Let's go, move on to the to, to the next image. Can I ask you something, in a minute, darling? Yeah, sure. Um, the you saved that as a TIFF file. I, I've I've never saved any, anything as a TIFF file. Well, what's the difference then, or why did you use a TIFF file, not right. anything else? I've I've used the TIFF file because uh, right now I'm not 100% comfortable with Luminar. I find I can do some things better in Photoshop. So if I save it as a TIFF file, I save it as 16 bits and I don't lose any details or information. If you save it as a JPEG, 
it's only got eight bits of depth. So if oh, you want right. to do any okay. more adjusting afterwards, then you introduce more noise and artifacts. I see. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So I, I prefer to keep the high quality. And if, if I want to go back to it and edit it in Photoshop or something else, uh, but JPEGs are fine for printing or put not shown on screens. But JPEG needs to be the final image, not something you want to modify afterwards. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Um, so, out of this section of images, uh, you can see I've got some TIFF files there, but also some Canon RAW files. What I was happy to, to learn is that Luminar can open Canon RAW files. I was very happy to, to learn that. I'm going to start off with this image. Uh, go, let's go to edit. You see what I mean by it's... Uh, I also find it takes quite a bit of time when you hit the edit button for the yeah. two, bo two boxes to come up as well. Yeah, the, the, there's a lot of delays in everything. It takes that. You've got to be patient with this because everything you do, there's a delay between pressing it and it actually taking place. So I'm in the, the essentials options again. And just bear with me, I've lost... I've, I've got my zoom thing come down to hide my buttons at the top. There we go. So I'm just going to do a quick crop. Same as before, I want to do a free crop because I'm not printing with any particular size. And I want the dog's nose on the third. I just lose a little bit of this sand at the bottom. But I want to keep the paw prints in there. I want to keep the shadow. The dog's nicely on the third there, on, on both intersecting thirds. I'll keep that crop as it is. Uh, actually, the, the sand is sloping a little bit as it would on a beach, but I'd like to, to maybe straighten that a touch. There we go. Just taking out a little bit of the, the slope of the beach. Now, there's a couple of things in, the, in this image. You can see the, the left left side of the image part of the dog is very dark is almost no detail there at all there's nice light on on the right side the sand is very bright at the bottom but it's very dark at the back and and your eye go is drawn to what's bright compared to what's dark um, so for me i need to correct the the brightness and i'd like to add a little bit more texture into the sand So if I zoom into the dog first, you can Shame see about that left eye, isn't it? Isn't it just? But I know, I know. What, watch what happens when you bring up the shadows. Oh, it's coming. Yeah, yeah. But by increasing the shadows, you're also increasing the noise there. Yeah. So don't push it too far. I'm just going to zoom back out to the original. Yeah, so you've got a bit more details in there. You can see the shape of the dog now. It's, it's not all lost in the blacks. There are no real blown out highlights. Maybe a little bit on, on the paws, too, a little bit too bright. So I'll just bring that back a touch and then minimize the light. I'm, I'm happy with the color temperature. Because again, you can see the long shadow, the light was low, so you'd have the orange effect of the light. I prefer to keep that and then make it too blue. Just to play, let's see what the AI accent will do. And you can see the AI accent brings out a lot, but you lose the, the black sheen of the dog then. So may, may, maybe we can use just slight amount of this. Again, not a, not overdoing anything, so it still looks quite natural. Let's bring out a little bit more structure. So you can see an increase in the amount of the, the AI structure now. All the sand details are really becoming enhanced. So that's a little bit overdone, maybe. Let's bring it back. Move it 
down so I can see. You can see where the point of focus is. It's quite a really shallow depth of focus there. So you can see exactly what the AI structure is doing. Zoom back out. Minimize that. Um, color, the color saturation and vibrance. Maybe I'd in increase the vibrance a little, but I wouldn't increase the color saturation. And on this image, I wouldn't change the color cast either. Now for the details, let's click into the dog. No, it won't let me, so I'll have to manually zoom in. So when, when I'm sharpening, I tend to only keep it at 50%. I don't see the point in sharpening it at 100% because you pixel peep in a bit too much then. Um, so I'm going to increase the small, uh, I'll just go to maximum on the small details so you can see the effect and then back it off. So it's just a small sharpening of the texture of the fur. Also the medium details, which will do the, the, the more clumpy parts of the hair. But I'm not going to touch anything in the large details, otherwise we'll start to get haloing around there that I don't like. It's all a preference. If, if you like the halo in effect, then by all means do it. But for me, uh, I don't like it so much. There we go. So you can already see the details of it, all the fine details coming out. They've still got a lot of noise in the, in the really dark areas there. So for that, I'm going to use a little bit of luminosity denoise. Not too much. So you can see the, the background textures denoised a bit as well. So the, the quality of the picture there, the details and everything else I've really brought out and made it much more dramatic with, with the sand, the texture of the sand and the the texture of the fur of the dog. I'm still not happy with the balance of the light in the image. So as always, I'd use a small vignette to draw your attention into the subject, but not overpowering. So just to see the effect of that, actually I'll probably use a slightly larger size as well and bring it down. So that's a bit better. So, so that draws you more into the subject. But again, I need to dodge and burn to darken down some of this sand because the sand is brighter and distracting my eye from, from the dog itself. So for that, go down to the pro and I'm going to use the dodge and burn, as, burn and say start painting. So I want to use a large brush for this. Again, take this strength down to just 5%. And I want to darken down the sand. One of the biggest frustrations I've got with Luminar is the delay in the brush click compared to seeing the results. So you've got to really take your time. With, with Photoshop, I can use the graphics tablet and really go over it with a pen, just as if I was drawn on a piece of paper. But for, for Luminar, it seems to struggle with the update speed. So just to see the difference of that effect, so you can see the sand is darkened down without affecting the dog. Maybe it's still a little bit too bright under here. Take that down also the side of the dog so we've got no halo effect. There we go, I'm happy with that. Now if I wanted to lighten this side of the dog a bit more, I can. 
just very subtly. There we go. So we've got all the details. You can see the shape of the dog's face. Now you can see the, di the differentiation between the face and the, the body. You can see all the details. The focus of the image is now is truly on the dog. So just to have a look at the before and after the full picture. So that was the original. And that's what we've got. Lovely. And any yeah. questions? Hey, there's, a nice, there's a little dot that I can't stand by his back leg in the dark bit. For, for that one. Okay. Um, no. Okay. We, we left off and Luminar was calculating um, for, for, the, for the clone stamp tool. I think the, the question was from Paul James. Uh, so yes, Luminar has a clone stamp tool. Again, the problem that, uh, oh, not a problem, it's just a, an issue with the slowness of, that I find with Luminar, that it took maybe 30 seconds, because this is a large TIFF image, um, it took Luminar 30 seconds to calculate everything to prepare it for using the clone stamp. Uh, it's one of the, disappointing sides. So right now we're in the clone stamp tool and we have to click to set the source. So I want to remove this distracting yellow spot there. So I need to find some gray values either side of it that I could that I could use to eliminate that. So I'm going to select the mouse around this area here. And then I can use a smaller brush just to copy over the spot. So it, it's a typical uh, clone stamp tool, quite similar to, to Photoshop. You can use the Alt key to select your, your new spot and then copy over it. So you can use the Alt key the, exactly the same way as you do in Photoshop. Yeah, so I'm going to select new spot up here. It takes three seconds for things to update. Yeah. If I... Now, a lot of this, a lot of this is sand that's been thrown up by the dog running. So I don't want to remove that because it'll make it feel unreal. And I saw there's a couple of specks of, of sand here that I also want to keep those because they make it more authentic. I'm not too sure about some of these spots, so maybe I would take some of those out. Holding down the Alt key, take that out there. And this is on a similar level, so I can take that out there as well. Okay, does that answer your question, Paul? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Great. So, um, after I've done that, I've got to click Done. And then Lumina will reprocess the image into its final version. So again, um, it was much faster in processing that way than it was in creating it first. So you can see the original image had a very bright foreground of the sand, not much, no detail at all in the left hand side of the dog. The focus wasn't on the dog itself, it was the bright area was on, on, on the sand. And now you've brought the attention to the dog itself and all the details of the dog. And I've enhanced the, the grain, the grittiness of the sand, the detail of the sand as well. Then I can export it or save, uh, save it. Uh, let's go to browse. So I'll go into edits, select that one and export it as a 16-bit TIFF. So we, at least we've got a record of what we've done tonight. And once it's exported, I'm gonna close that down. Let's have a look at it before and after, after it's finished exporting in okay. its full view, Darren. <laughs> yeah, I know it does take a while, doesn't it? Yeah. It does, yes. Unfortunately, while it's exporting, you can't do anything else. 
Can I have a drink? I just did. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll have another one. <laughs> there we go. So it's fully exported. I've got to wait for... There we go. So that was the original. You can see the spot right behind the, the dog's back paw. And that's the, the final version. To, to be honest you, I'm not entirely happy. Maybe the background is a little bit too dark compared to the dog, but this is just an exercise. Yeah. I would probably spend more time on this refining it better. Yeah. Any questions, any comments? Everybody happy? Very good, thanks. You're welcome. So, ah, now this is another problem we've got. Another bug I found in Luminar, I can't remove this image anymore. So the only way to, I'm right clicking on, on the thumbnail in the top left corner. Um, but the only way to recover that now is to shut Luminar down and open it up again. So it's uh, still quite buggy for me. I'm not going to shut it down and start it back up. I'm just going to open an, another image. Uh, shall we take a look at replacing a sky? I think so. Oh, actually, before we do that, so I want to show you some other tools. Let's let's open this one. In the, the tool palette, the canvas palette, so you've got um, layers, canvas, essentials, creative, portrait, and pro. You've also got underneath in the tools, in the, um, in the canvas settings, you've got lens and geometry. Now, I, I like this a lot. So you, in Photoshop, you can uh, skew and free transform images. But what Luminar has, uh, this is far more intuitive for me. So if you have a wide angle lens, a, fi a fisheye lens, for example, you can remove the fisheye distortion using the lens distor distortion tool. Okay. You can de-vignette an image. So if you've got darkening of the edges, you can remove that. Or you can skew the image on the vertical. I, I, I thought this was brilliant. So I, I was a little bit low taking this picture. So I would prefer to have the vertical around that position compared to what I had. I'll just show you what, what it was originally. So you can see the, the front of the, the school bus is very pronounced. But that, for me, is a better angle for the school bus. Um, you can also move it on the horizontal. So if things don't quite align, uh, I, I was pretty much amazed when I saw this. You can use this for skewing, correcting buildings, straightening buildings, uh, objects like this. It, it's incredible. It, it's far more intuitive than I saw on Photoshop. Yeah, you can rotate it. So everything that it says on the slider, that's exactly what it does in this. Uh, the aspect, you can make it um, shorter and fatter or wider and taller. Or you can change the scale of it. So after you've done that, you can zo zoom in a little. Or you can offset it on the x-axis. I'll offset it on the y-axis. Now I like that because that, that offset on the x and the y is exactly how a tilt shift works. So that, 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 that's, a, that's, a, that's a fabulous feature. That is the only reason I wanted to, to show this image, just to show the, the lens and geometry part. So, and any questions on, on that part? 
everybody's no I, i've not i've not played too much for that one but um yeah. that well, looks if, very if, good. But if you want to straighten buildings uh, if if you've got conver con convergent verticals, for example, on yeah, buildings, no, I, I have that this, on this, my this, sh sh Shanghai um, skyscape. I had yeah. terrible convergence of the buildings yeah, on that. But, so. but, but but this lens and geometry is exactly the the tool that you want to use to remove that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Right. Let's see if I can. No, it's not letting me remove these things now. So it's possible. After a couple of these images, Luminar may crash on me again. But, uh, it, that, that's what tends to happen. If I right click on these, I used to have the option to, to remove them, but I can't anymore. Okay, let's go on to a sky replacement. Edit single image. Before I actually replace the sky, I'm just going to do a, a little bit of edit. No, actually, uh, I, I think I'll replace the sky first and then edit later. So, on the let's wait for the on the on the creative tab, you've got an AI sky replacement. Now, there's already a, a list of preset skies that you can select from. But if you're going to do this for competition, I, I discussed this with Russell before this meeting. If you're going to do anything for a competition, every element that you put into your image has to be taken by yourself. You can't use any of these preset skies for a competition image. And we're part of the Welsh Federation, and that's part of the rules for the Federation. So we can't do it. But you can take your own skies. You can do an HDR shot, for example, where one of the images has the sky detail and the other image has the foreground detail. So I'm going to load a custom sky image and I'm going to take this one from my bracketed shot. It takes a while to process again. Now that's, it looks like it's completely failed. But you can move the horizontal position to align. Oops, have I gone the wrong way? Let's go the other way. There we go. So you can use the horizontal position in the tool to position the sky properly for your image. Now, we've got the sky detail in there. I can show you the, the before and after, yeah. There wasn't a, a, a correct alignment of, of the trees. I'm, I'm not too concerned about that. Um, but if we zoom in, you can see that it's, ooh, I've lost everything now. Well, I can see the image. I can see the previous image without the. Um... Yeah, I, I think it just uh, it just crashed. I, I think I'm going to have to restart Luminar and do that again. So I can't close it back down. Okay. I expected this to happen because every time I start losing those um, those options, I know it's going to crash after a, a few minutes. I don't. I don't have those problems myself. But, uh, no, no, me. It's never crashed once. It is. It is as slow as you said, and, and sometimes frustrating that way. But yeah. Yeah, mine's never crashed at never all. Crashed, and and I, I always use it in um, as a Photoshop uh, plugin as well. Yeah, the the, the photo, Photoshop plugin for me refuses to work. And mm -hmm. I've 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 searched on Google and on the Luminar help uh, chats and everything else, and mm. there are thousands of people having the same problem. Oh, wow. Um, so, let's, let's try and do that again. 
So it, it isn't just me. Everything that I'm reporting, there are thousands of people screaming out for the for the same fixes. So let's go back to sky replacement. Choose my sky, which is that one. Explorer manage, remove that. Work on it again so I can zoom in now. So you can see uh, it's gone again. Okay. So you can see it's gone wrong in a number of places. It's gone wrong where the smoke is, yeah. Um, so what I'm going to try and do is mask this out and recreate the smoke. So for the sky replacement tool, you've got a mask there. Again, I'm going to use the brush. So right now I'm re removing the mask. Um, maybe I'll use uh, a smaller opacity for some of the this area up here. Just to blend it in a bit more. For the more severe parts, I need to use a higher opacity. The biggest part I was worrying about was the the train itself. just to keep all the details of the, of the train. Now, I'm not concerned that the sky there is darker than the trees, the foliage. I can zoom out. Let's go to fit the screen. Let's come down to fog. So you've got all these options for mystical and color styles and textures. But I'm going to create uh, some fog. So I'm going to recreate some of the steam there. I've got light fog, increase the intensity. So that's OK. But now I'm going to edit, edit the mask with the brush. Start off with, I'm going to remove the fog completely to start with. Oh, there we go. It's, it's, it's just a, an update problem with Luminar. Yeah. And now I'm going to use. Um, a low opacity paint and start oop. I'll use a larger brush and by painting the fog back over a lot of this it's going to hide a multitude of sins of the algorithm Use a bit more opacity of the six percent. Let's try that. So 
So with the steam train, what I'm doing there is enhancing the, the smoke that's coming out of it. So from what I'm clicking, Luminar is around 10 seconds behind what I'm actually doing. So I've done lots of clicks there. Zoom out, go back to the normal fit the screen. How powerful is that laptop you're using? It's not, it's a full power computer. This Photoshop has absolutely no problems with this. Okay. But Luminar uses a lot of AI and it's very processor intensive compared to Photoshop. The algorithms in Photoshop are very um, efficient. But Luminar seems to really need to do many more calculations for the AI. And it, it struggles with quite a lot. There we go. So then, then I'd go back to do the, the normal stuff, of, uh, the, the lightning. And you can see the, the front of the train is not so, so light. So if I go to the light, I'd increase the shadows a little just to bring the right details into everything. Just reduce the highlights a touch. I think it's on a bit of a, a skew, so let's, let's get the crop right. I don't want this stuff at the bottom. It, it doesn't add anything to the image. In fact, it distracts. Let's go to free so we can see what's coming into the train. But we lose some of the distractions at the side, we lose some of the distractions at the bottom, and I don't really need any of that sky above that level. The other thing I can see is it feels a bit on the slant to me, so I'm going to rotate that slightly. And press done. Now, I never add a vignette before I crop. I only add the vignette after I crop. That's, that's why I've changed my way of working with Illuminar compared to what I do on Photoshop, is that it's got a vignette tool that works to the edges of the image that you've cropped to. So let's darken the edges a little. And then I'm going to do a little dodging and burning uh, a bit too much there. Taking time to catch up. I guess it's taking time to catch up because we're working with two images and everything in memory now. So that's the vignette. I want to go back to the light and pull back some of the the highlights because you can see the top of the train is very bright. Let's pull those back a little, and then go to Pro, Dodge and Burn. Now, it's a little bit clumsy to use, but there we go. Let's go down to 6%, 5%. So I'm going to darken first. I'm going to darken part of this train and darken part of this bright sky. And then lighten the front of the train. I also want to darken part of this track down here. So your focus should be on the train and your eye always goes to the parts that are lightest in the image. Now I've made many, many clicks there. And Luminar is taking quite some time to catch up. So. Let's just take a look. So that was the before. That's the after. And we haven't even gone into a lot of the other stuff yet. So we've replaced the sky. I've added more smoke. We've dodged and burned, added a bit of a vignette. I'm just going to go back into the, the details now. 
So let's look at the details enhancer. I want to zoom in 50% for that. Nope. I lost the image for some reason. There we go, got it back. So I'm going to increase the small and the medium details, but not too much. Okay. Turn it off. So that's before, that's after. So you can see the, the, the really bright areas are of an equal level now to the front of the engine. And the front of the engines lead in, so for, for me that's equally important. Let's go back to fit on the screen. Uh, close the detail enhancer. Let's go back to uh, the edit there. Uh, landscape as I was looking for. So in the landscape enhancer, you've also got this option for foliage enhancer. So that uses the, the green channel and you can improve or increase the, the color range of what would be the, the foliage. Um, that's, that's a bit overdone for my liking. So I'm gonna really back it off and just give it a little bit of a boost. So compared to the original image, which was this, um, I think in this case, Lumina has done quite a reasonably good job. I'd, I'd be happy with that. And I think Photoshop would struggle to get the, the same results as that in, in such a short time. So I'm, I'm quite pleased. Any, any questions on that? No, it's good. I think that's that's a good point you made there, Darren. And you've said it a few times. It is, it's, it's fairly easy to use, really, isn't it? And intuitive is the word you used. And you just yes. got a great image then in, well, I don't know what that was, maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes max. Yeah, and, and it was live okay. It's not perfect. I probably rushed it a little bit and just yeah. to, to, to find, um, to play with some of the tools. But I've replaced the sky. I've added more smoke in using the fog tool. It, it's just apply in your mind to how you want to achieve your, your end result. Yeah. I mean, replacing a sky in Photoshop would have probably taken you as long as it took you for the whole image, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. You'd have to go into complexities of masking and everything else, and this, yeah. this was far more easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And anybody else has any other questions? Um, no, I'm I'm quite um, I'm quite comfortable with what you've done so far. Anyway, um, okay, good. Uh, you're an expert, Russell. I'm no, I'm not far from an expert. <laughs> I watched I watched perhaps one or two more videos than you. <laughs> that doesn't make me an expert. Uh, I I've, I've got to be honest. I haven't watched any videos. I, I there are some into... there are some superb videos in particular yeah. the ones that specialize in comp, uh, composites really okay. really good yeah I, I haven't got into that part of it I, i've got to be perfectly honest with you I, yes i know photoshop i had problems with luminar when it, when i first opened it and i i parked it for a while and i only really started looking into it last night and that's all i've had with luminar so if, if I can do it in, in one night like this, I'm sure it's really intuitive for everybody else as well. So should we have a look at um, portraits? Okay. Yeah, so let's open edit single image and I'll open a portrait. Now, I'm, I'm going to open the, the raw image first. You'll recognize this one, Paul. Yeah, that's Danny. Yeah. So, you know, I don't mean to offend anybody, but everybody has skin blemishes. Okay? No. Yes. 
<laughs> Nobody ever has perfect skin. Now, what I found was some little flakes of skin like this. Lumina has tools for, for skin enhancement and removing skin flaws. Now, I know frequency separation very well. I edit portraits in Photoshop. Uh, I, I, I can make portraits sing in Photoshop. I find the portrait tools in Lumina are very restrictive. For example, um, if we go to the AI Skin Enhancer tool, and remove skin defect in this image. It, it, it takes a little bit of time for it to process. But it, it doesn't remove any of these blemishes. But what it, oh, give me a second, I've got to stop pressing that space bar. And give it time to catch up. There we go, it's caught up now. So, what it's done is you see there's some lines across the, the forehead naturally, but it seems to have created some square areas where it's not, it, it's removed some blemishes off the forehead. Let me do this for example. So you can see it's removed this and it's removed this but it's moved a line further down and it's a little bit blocky and it's distorted there. That's not great for removing blemishes at all, in, in my opinion. So personally, I would edit the image in Photoshop first to remove the blemishes and then use some of the tools. So I'm going to Add another image, a single image. Oh, let me just cancel that. I'll zoom in for a second, so you can see that on on the nose area there, it, it hasn't removed at all those the, the skin issues that I wanted to remove. So I've already done a quick um, thirty. Even if you push the amount off. slider, it doesn't move that flaky skin? The, the, the amount slider doesn't affect remove skin defect. Okay, all right. Uh, that, that's something completely different. So what I did in Photoshop first is use the spot healing tool, and that does a fabulous job of removing all, all those parts. Yeah? So I would use, I would open Photoshop first, what 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 the AI, AI skin enhancer the the defect removal part is doing is is trying to remove some uh, spots and things like that, but it's not it, it doesn't touch high contrast things like hairs and flakes of skin because they got such a high con contrast it doesn't even touch them so use the healing brush tool in Photoshop first to remove all that stuff and then import that image into Luminar. So that, that, that's the way I would handle my portraits if I was to use Luminar. Anybody not understand what I just said? Was that clear to everybody? Yeah, I'm happy with that, yeah. Yeah, cool. cool. Okay. So I, I, I would not touch the AI skin defects removal at all because uh, I, I've tried it on a couple of uh, portrait images and I had the same strange effects that didn't do what I wanted it to do. Just as a matter of interest, yeah. I don't think there's any of you that have really studied my face, <laughs> but on my right eye, I've got um, like a, it's not a wart, I don't know what the bloody hell it is, it's some growth that I've had there for, okay. I don't know how long. Yeah. Twin? But, but that removed it completely. Oh, did it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. That's because it's got that contrast that Darren talks about, Nick, because it's, yeah. it's quite big. Right, okay. It is quite big, yes. It's yeah. quite pronounced, but it just took it away. 
right, okay. But but there are some of the, the features in, in the Luminar portrait editing that are brilliant. They really are great. So I, I'm, not, I'm not knocking it. It's just that some things you need to, you need to prepare your image first and then use it in Luminar to get the best results. Yeah, I found that as well. I, I, I do exactly what you just said and get rid of the most of the, just about all of the blemishy stuff, whether it be before or after is done in Photoshop. Yeah. And then I, ju I love the, the, you no doubt you're going to do it now, but I love some of the other, without going into any detail, yeah, I love some sure. of the other features it's got. Yeah. So let, let, let's go into this then. So uh, the AI skin enhancer, let's increase that. And you can see immediately the skin is getting smoother. Now, my recommendation is not to overcook it and make it look plasticky. Just back it off a little so that most of the blemishes, the, the spots and everything else are going. Nobody ever has perfect skin, so you know when it's been overdone. Yeah. Just to see the difference. It's subtle, but you can see that it's certainly reduced a lot of the lines and marks on the face. Also the shine removal, I quite like. Yeah. She hasn't got a huge amount of shine there, but you can see the difference this makes. I've probably overdone it by putting it to 100%, so I'm gonna back that off because I still want a bit of shine on the bright area of the face, but not too much. And you can also edit the mask. You can remove part of the, those effects where you want. Let's go to the portrait enhancer. Now this is what I really like. I, 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 I found this fabulous. Um, so we can increase the light on the face. Oh, actually, let's go back to AI Enhance first. AI Enhance, increase that just to bring out a lot of the colors and the, the, the AI Enhance first is, is great. Then go back to the portrait. So I can reduce the, the face light a touch there. I'm going to zoom into the eyes. Leave Luminar catch up with the rendering. There we go. So the eye whitening, I'll, just to show the effect, I'm going to put it to 100% and then back it off. It is so great at masking the eye. Now to do this in Photoshop, uh, it's really fiddly. But Luminar have got the algorithms to make it so simple to use. So you can brighten the eyes up. And then, so you see the structure of the eye itself. With the eye enhancer, you can really bring out the structure of the eye. This is something you can't do so simply with Photoshop. It's clever, that, isn't it? Oh, it's brilliant. It's just unbelievable with a slider, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, and the, the way it's able to know where the eye area is and mask it all off and blend it all in you'd have to go so through so many levels in uh, layers in photoshop to be able to do that mm. and you've got it all with one slider here lightroom does it lightroom does it as well <laughs> ah, okay why but, aren't i disappointed that you could say that pete <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what i did today right i was editing a wedding photo with seven people in it and it did everybody's eyes like that yeah incredible and and you know what you, you i'm not going to go into it on this one but all the changes that you make on one image like this you can apply you can copy and paste all the the recipe settings that you've made in that image and just paste them to all the others so they all come out the same oh wow yeah, all right go cool. yeah so so I, I won't have time to go into that on this session hmm. but look that up and so if you get one image right and you've got many images using yeah. the same lighting techniques Apply the same techniques to all the images and you get the same results. Oh, cool. With Again? a control button. Uh, I, I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, really it was. is good. And he's so easy. Yeah, yeah. Um, she, she doesn't have dark circles, so I'm not going to bother removing those. Um, slim face, yes, you can slim the face down. I'm just going to do a small adjustment to the face. And you can also make the eyes large. 
I'm just going to let Luminar catch up because it's, um, it, it's not rendering in detail at the moment. <laughs> yeah, okay, those, those eyes are a bit too large and unnatural, so I'm going to back that off. Now, the improve eyebrows part, I'm going to zoom out to, to fit the screen. In this image, Di uh, Denny's eyebrows match her hair, so that's no issue for me. If you improve the eyebrows, it darkens them down, and I don't like that on this example. But on other examples where you might have somebody with dark hair and light <coughs> eyebrows, it could give an improvement. Uh, lip saturation, so if you want to make the lips stand out a bit, I'm going to increase the color of the lips, increase the redness of the lips, and just darken them down a little bit so they're not, because the lips reflect a lot of light when you take a picture in, under studio lights. You can darken them down a little as well. Let's just zoom into that. Tell her what it could do with a, a grey hair removal slider. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I need one of those. <laughs> or hair replacement. Yeah. Yeah, right. I, I could do one of those. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've got to be honest with you, I'm not going to go into the other tools and sharpen this because the original image is sharp enough for my liking. So I'm, I'm not going to change the sharpening of this at all. Uh, teeth whitening, the mouth is not open, but the teeth whitening part operates exactly the same as the eye whitening. So let's go back to the normal fit to screen. Let's do a crop. Again, I'm going to do the, the free crop and take all this distracting stuff out to the side. Bring this in. I'm going to actually bring the, the top down so it cuts just the top of the hair off. So it's a mystery, is it? Well, uh, I if, think you if, need... if you look in the magazines, you see most of the images where you top of the top of the head or part of the hair is cropped off. Ah. There we go. So I'm, I'm just going to keep the that, that eye, the most common, uh, prominent eye, on the third there. Just have a little bit more space behind. I'm quite done. Just applying the crop. Let's look at the before and after. Yeah, so her face is a little bit slimmer, her eyes are a little bit larger. Blemishes are removed, the lips are more pronounced. The details of the eyes are amazing. If you wanted to print that, just leave Luminar catch up. There we go. So you can see the, the detail that's in there for, for print. In a, in a couple of small ste logical steps, I think the results that you can get in Luminar are brilliant, provided you do, you do the the blemish removal first in Photoshop. Has anybody tried printing out of Lumina yet? No. I don't think it makes, it, it, it doesn't, I haven't tried printing out of Lumina, but if you export it as a 16-bit TIFF or if that is your final image, you're not going to do any other work in Photoshop or anything else, then you'll get equal results as long as you use sRGB or whatever your printer is okay. calibrated to. Can you get, um, like in Photoshop to get it to take control of the the um, the profile. Um, I've got to be honest with you, Peter. I don't know the answer to that. I haven't gone into that depth. What happens if you hit the print button? Does it uh, come up with a menu? Uh, let's take a look. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yep, yep, no. no, just just give me a second. I didn't find it. Uh, exactly intuitive on how to resize the image either. Can you? Well, I think it's under the image um, pull down it's, menu. But... It's, it's under the crop tool. Just, just, just do the crop to the way you want it. So if you go to the crop tool, yeah. come on. And so you can set all the sizes you want there. Yeah, no, if you wanted to do, I mean, if you wanted to do 1900 by 1200, you know? 
I was in Oh, Steam. right. Okay. Um, that, that's under the export tool. Yeah, export, yeah. Yeah, so it tells you the, the size and yeah. the resolution there. Yeah, but so you, the you want to be able to see it before you export it, don't you? Well, no, what, what you do is you say export across the long edge or the short edge. So the long edge in this, because it's vertical. And you say, I wanted so many pixels high at such a resolution. Yeah, but you can't sharpen it before print, as in on your resize image. No, you can't. Have a look in the image pull down menu, Darren. I think yeah, there's. Um... Peter asked a question on print. So there's. No, there's just the preferences. It's very basic. So you can't. You, you, it isn't a good. You can't print to a profile. No. So in, in that respect, I'd say export it to a 16 bit TIFF and then import it into Photoshop and do it from there with full control. Can you go to the image pull down menu, Darren? Um, is it under adjustments? Is it under adjustments, yeah? No. 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 I have seen it. I have. That, the, that's just so I can copy all these adjustments and paste it to another image. I, I have set the size of the image using a menu. I can't remember which one it was. Right, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Might have been either. the view, I don't know, I can't remember. Yeah. Okay, um, right, let's have a look and see what else I've got here. Oh, does anybody have any questions on what we just did there? No, it's good. So we've done the bus, we've done the bird, the dog. Um, ah, so. Some limitations of the, the sky replace as well. It's It doesn't work with, with everything. So you've got to really make sure that the, the foreground that you're using matches the, the sky you're going to use as well. So let's open this one up as a, as a base. Are we okay for time? Yeah. Yes, it's 10 to 9. It's... Good. So I'm just going to use the AI accent to, to equalize the light in this image to start with. Uh, increase the structure a little. Increase the shadows. Increase the detail. I've never pushed those that far. That's interesting. No, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm just going a bit over the top at the moment. Mm. But I've pushed these quite far because you see the, the ripples on the water. Look at the, the before and after, how it's brought them out. Mm. So you can mask it all off afterwards. You, you, if you don't want the, the details all over, but you want the, the details of the water really brought out like that, then the detail enhancer is brilliant. Yeah. So mm. all the swirls and the textures of the water have, have, have really been brought out with that. Screen. So that's that. That was just a very. No, I can see I pulled the the shadows out too much in this, and there's too much color noise in there. Even the um, the denoise tool is not going to remove that much uh, color denoise. There's that much color noise. You can see it's, it's such so big and blotchy. It's just going to fail to remove that. For this example, I'm not too bothered about it because I know it was almost completely black when. And that that was introduced by that detail, is that? Uh, yeah. Well, the original image. If I go look at the original image, there's no detail in there at all. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. completely black in that section, or it looks completely black. So the AI tools have tried. I've, I've pushed it too far as well. But the AI tools have tried to get the details and the shapes of the rocks. And you, you can see the shapes of the rocks there, 
but there's just far too much color noise because there was mm. it was almost yeah. completely black. Yeah, so I, I just pushed it too far for this example. Um, so let's go to try and replace this this guy in this one. Now I'm going to choose a very different sky, which is this one. And you can see that it doesn't really work at all well. Um, which is exactly why I use this example. So the sky was too orange and too dark, but also the horizon on the original image had clouds in the background, and it just simply doesn't doesn't fit. Uh, you can edit the mask, you can try and recover it, but you really need to get uh, interesting skies to sort of match the, the image that you want to work with as well. And edit the mask a little. Smaller brush. So I want to paint. Oh. The sky is gone completely weird. He's trying to raise that then. So just by trying to add and remove the mask, the luminar has gone crazy. It seems to have. I think the problem, failed. not with I don't know what's going on there, but oh. the, it's, it's picked up your original clouds in the very very background there as mountains or something, isn't it? So it hasn't. Yeah, possibly. It hasn't replaced them. You'd be better off yeah. maybe taking them out in Photoshop first. Yeah, and then... yeah, yeah. That, that, that was exactly my point. You'd need to do some pre-editing yeah. first and yeah. may, may, maybe mask up the sky or, or, or just do it all in Photoshop in the first place. So, but it, not every image is appropriate for replacing the sky. Can you try one of the preset skies, Darren, just to see how yeah, that deals sure. with it? Uh, I, I can't close this down now. Just bear with me. I'm going to... That's Just choose a different there. sky, the song. Yeah. No, it was crashed, wasn't it? No, Luminar crashed again, so oh, I'm sorry. Start it back up. I thought they'd um they've solved a lot. I, I I was on the Luminar Issues Facebook page and um yeah. and, and a lot of people are saying that things are a lot better now with is it four point two one or four point two one? Yeah, this this is the latest latest version. I updated it on oh, the wow. on the weekend and I checked for updates again today. Mm. And this is the latest version. Wow. But there are still some issues with it. Yeah. So I'm going to forget this image. Is it it, does it update automatically then? Yeah. You don't pay for it, but um, I, it, I think it just offers you the update and you, you press yes sort of thing. Yeah, you, see, you I, I, got, I got the, Im the options now to remove these images, but I, it, it wasn't available before because it was... On the in the process of crashing, and I know after that happens, after a few minutes, it does crash. So let's open that image again. And what's strange there is that initially all all the thumbnails at the bottom were all the the previous image. It was quite strange. So let's look at AI yeah, replace sky, sky selection. Uh, let's look for a dramatic sky. Yeah, I think it's a mountain, isn't it? Yeah, I think. So. But what what it's supposed to do is try and color correct the. But the you you can image. you can shift that horizon down, can't you? Yeah, you can you you can shift all of it, this. It won't cover up those those orange clouds though, Russ, no. it thinks it's a mountain. Because the, because the clouds in the background of the original image are so, such a high contrast, it thinks they should be there as part of the image. Right. So you need a, a good horizon and good foreground. So it thinks those mountains in the background are part of the foreground. So what you have to do is remove those from the original image to start with. So there, there, there are limitations. 
But as we saw in the train picture, you can have very good results with it as well. Okay. Right. Are there any questions? No, it's good. Very good. No, no, not at all. Yeah, well, sorry, can I ask you a question about the library? Um, on the Luminar 3, um, when I was uh, downloading it, it said I had to put in where I was keeping my... Um, um, my images. Well, I, yeah. I I keep all mine on a um, on an external hard drive. So all if I want to use any of the pictures that I have to go into the library, I can export them in. But yeah. it would I couldn't on Luminar three. I couldn't export just the one. I had to import the whole file that I kept it in. Did you? Is is it different in this? Um, well, obviously it is because you can import the one file because that's what you've been doing. Yeah. Well. Uh, for, for me, the reason I don't like using Light, Lightroom um, is because I don't like the way Lightroom handles files. So I prefer to use Photoshop where I can work on indi individual files. But if I was editing a wedding and I wanted to apply the same technique to many, many images, I'd probably use the library and do it that way. Um, mm -hmm. But if you have... Um, an external drive, what you have to do is make sure that every time you plug that drive in, it has the same drive letter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you've got more than one drive, if you plug one in, a, a, a different one in, and it takes that drive letter, then Luminar is going to look for the mm -hmm. images on that one and they won't exist. Yeah, well, actually, I, I leave the, the one I use, uh, I, I leave it plugged in all the time anyway. Right, so. okay. So that, that, that shouldn't be a problem. It it doesn't then if 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 I put um, if, if I'm saving an, a new image to, to to the external hard drive in a particular file, yeah. it doesn't update it on on the on the Luminar uh, library then. Okay, but again, that could be a bug in Luminar three. I don't know if it's still the same effect on Luminar four. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's something I can't answer. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's a pity on you that um, you're having that problem with the Photoshop plugin, but yeah. Doug, for argument's sake, do you use Photoshop, Doug? Yes, yes. So, so you'd be better off putting this as a Photoshop plugin for all the sort of reasons that Darren mentioned earlier? Oh, right, in that okay. case then, right, you just bring your image into Photoshop and then you'd select um, Luminar from the, from the filters. Oh, and right, and okay. then it would, that, that image that you brought into Photoshop, as you normally would, it would just pull that then into into Luminar. Into Luminar. You can just use that one that one image. Okay, uh, is is uh, um, I'll have to have a look. Then I'm not sure how to use Luminar as a plugin. I, I don't know how to. Yeah, yeah I'll have to find um, well, out. Well, like, I I can show you quickly, Doug. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. If you open Luminar, you've got a file, and install plugins. All right. And All right. You it, it'll give you your list of Photoshop, Lightroom, and, and Elements, and you can just. Yeah, oh, uninstall or install. Oh, right, thank it, you. It, really, it really is that simple. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So, but hopefully, I, I hope it works for you. But I've just done a quick Google, Google search, and you can see on Google there's thousands of reports of uh, plugins not working for Luminar for, with Photoshop. Yeah, some of them are quite new and all, aren't they? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, they're, they're all quite old there Look, is yeah that, they, they are quite old but I, was, I was following the latest one from just this week and there are many people still having the same problem I updated Luminar this week and I've updated Photoshop and Windows mm. and I still the plugin used to work but mm. it stopped working after I updated Luminar Oh, it's a shame. It's a shame because you... it's really, really good and easy to use as a plugin. I, yeah. As a as a standalone, to me, it it's it's not enough on its own. You know. No, it but, isn't because you need yeah. to go back and forth from Photoshop to Luminar. Yeah. yeah. Are you using a, a PC or a Mac, uh, Paul? PC. All oh, right. So it isn't a PC problem, or it's not a no, Windows it's problem. Same, same as same as Darren. I think more or less. No, no I've, I've I've been going through the the problems. And even people with Macs have exactly the same problem. Yeah, I, I, I've, I haven't had problems installing it, but... Uh, yeah. But it, but it seems have... that uh, the, the solution from Luminar is you've got to download all of the plugins 
standalone and install them standalone instead of doing it the, this method. But yeah. I, have, I haven't had time to do that yet. I've only ever used it as a plugin. I've never used it as yeah. a, as yeah, a same, yeah. standalone. There we go. Good. So there we are, guys. I'm, I'm finished for tonight. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording. So uh, anything we say now won't be committed to um, the...